Hey everyone. Um, recently, I had the fortune to work with Mike at a company called Fieldcraft Survival, and that's his kit that you see right there on the rock. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail. I'm going to let Mike do that. But um, being prepared in an environment like this is absolutely critical. Um, one of the things that Overland Bound does, and you know, our mission is to make overlanding and spending time outside accessible to everyone. Fieldcraft Survival, their mission is to make sure that everyone is prepared to survive in the great outdoors. Um, Mike introduced me to this kit and I've never seen anything like it on the market. It is a extremely compact survival kit that goes in that little box you see on the rock. Um, and I'm going to let Mike talk about what's in the kit and how it's used. But when I saw the kit, I thought, you know what, that needs to be in every Overland rig. And you guys already know um, that Overland Bound, we are sticklers about quality. We do not promote products that we don't believe in. And in fact, there are very few that we, that we believe in and we stand behind. Uh, this is one of them. Check them out. Again, it is Fieldcraft Survival dot com and you can see these kits on that site they've got other stuff there as well and they are uh, extremely qualified to make a kit like this uh, you should look up Mike and and his background and find out more about him uh, but now we're gonna go inside and Mike's gonna break down this kit and tell you what it's all about Obviously, took their, all the contents. It's R and D, but the, we had downrange. We got to make our own kits in low vis environments, like environments that we go into that are that are we're not there. We have to basically commercially acquire stuff and put things together. And there's always staple to every survival kit, but we we wanted to focus on the priorities of work for this one. So the priorities of work are one of the elements, right? So if the uh the elements are going to kill you first mm -hmm. so so blanket is the first thing that we put in here and this is a space blanket essentially you use it for sheltering yourself to maintain body heat but you'd also build it with a fire to reflect heat uh it's fire it's fire retardant not fireproof um but it also has like a vs-17 panel which is what we use to uh signal aircraft and a reflective panel on the other side which obviously could be used as a mirror to reflect you can also capture water in it which is kind of unique um, um, These should be in everybody's kit because when things go wrong, if they go wrong, you're going to be exposed to the elements. And the, again, the elements is what kills you the fastest in uh, a survival situation, especially the cold, obviously. Um, the next thing, obviously, is water. Water is uh, the most important thing, but you know what? Every kit, most kits have water. They actually have water in the kit. Where can you go and get water? There's like, water everywhere, right? You can procure water. I don't see any survival situation where you really can't get to water i mean if i can get water in the middle of baghdad iraq in the middle of the desert and find a garden hose which i've done before and put it inside and put an iodine tablet in it and you can find water anywhere in the world uh, so the problem is not procuring water the problem is getting the water and purifying it so we put a, a one liter which is pretty much the standard it takes about under survival duress uh one liter a, an hour you need to be put in your body depending on your body weight obviously but in 72 hours without water, you're starting to deteriorate, your organs are shut down, and most people die within 72 hours of not having water, especially uh, out with exertion. So we got the one liter, and then we got the uh, iodine tablets. We use chlorine dioxide, which kills every single thing possibly in, in, the, uh, in, in water. You can get the shit, I mean, the, the little shit creek pond right here that's like stagnant, you can get that. I would filter it through a shirt, just to get rid of the uh, stuff, but you can put that water in here and it'd be as good as, good as the water that's coming out of the faucet right now. So there's 20 liters, which is enough for seven. I, I estimated it for uh, three days of survival. So I call it a 72 hour kit because reliably you could survive off of it for 72 hours mm -hmm. if you had to. Um, the next thing is uh, fire, right? Fire is one of the uh, the elements in life that we need, we need it to uh, maintain body heat, but it also can be used as a signature uh, day and night. So if you're in the day and you need to make a signature, you get live vegetation, you put it on top of the fire and it creates this plume of smoke. That's how the Indians signal to each other. That's a good signal device. Nighttime, obviously it's a heat, heated signature 
and um, good for morale, but also good for maintaining bottled heat and boiling water. It says 3,000 strikes, the Scout 2.0, we're, we're dealers for this company called Light My Fire. But you basically, you set it, it says tinder, tinder in here, and you, uh, with kindling, you could basically, the, the whole point of making a fire is you want a spark to ignite a fire, because it's it's easy to um, ignite something, or, or easy to spark something, but it's harder to ignite something. So you put cotton balls in there, you spurt them out, you get a little bit of tinder, or pieces of, uh, uh, gra dried grass and you basically put it down on it which you got two little thumb holes right here and you push pull it or push it down and there's magnesium on the rod and then you get a little tiny flash that right there is enough but i that's like a they make them even still. this is like a minimalist kit right so this is the minimum i would carry on on my person or in my car always but this right here they even make with just a rod to get rid of the plastic and you carry the rod and use a knife and then scrape off the uh the magnesium off of it. Um, also in here, um, you have a, a multi-tool before we go on a signal. Um, so if if you blow out of your situation uh, in in distress and you grab one thing, if you grab this kit, you'll still be able to, to work it. You'll be able to shave kindling or tinder uh, with this knife that's on this kit. Hell, you might might even be able to use it for self-defense. I wouldn't depend on it, but. Um, next thing is signal. Signaling for, um, depending on the situation, if you're in a natural um, situation or natural disaster situation where you have to signal, um, obviously audible noises, people are looking for you, they're going to hear it, but also communication in between you and your team, your inner team, um, it's a whistle. It's nothing special about a whistle, but the OD green whistle is an U.S. Army tool. I mean, this thing's like three bucks. But it has a compass on one end that actually works. We've used it a lot. And then it has uh, a thermometer, or not a thermometer, but a, uh, a temperature gauge that reg uh, registers ambient air temperature. Also, for signal, it's got a signaling mirror. We've actually tested this one out here. We use stainless steel signaling mirrors because stainless steel could be used for other stuff. You could actually cut this. You could manipulate it to, to use it as a shank if you wanted to. Um, but it's real tough and robust. But there's a, obviously a reflective end to it. And you basically peep through this hole, aiming at whatever you're trying to signal with in the, in the sun. And we got 2.7 miles winded. I made wow. fun of her. I said she was putting on her makeup and then accidentally <laughs> signaled her dad. It was flying an airplane, but she had it and she was just messing around and then hit Dave flying the airplane in. And we're trying to gauge how, how uh, close you can get. They advertised like three miles, but it was like 2.7 that we, wow. he was able to see it. And he's like, oh. And it hit him in the, in the eyes on accident, and then he directed his attention. And obviously, as you get closer, you can almost see basically the ray of wow. light, the beam of light that's shining on it. Also, good for ground. People don't think about this for ground stuff, but if you're on the ground and you need to signal somebody, that's pretty pretty imperative too. Uh, we use uh, Petzl E lights. To me, Petzl is the I've used headlamps my entire military career, and I usually have them around my neck. But the reason I like this one is because most people don't carry carbines uh, with lights on them. They're expensive. They're bulky. Um, this one's cool because you can actually mount it on it because it's retractable lanyard. You can mount it on anything. Mm -hmm. So if you have a light, um, uh, if you don't have a flashlight on your gun, you can mount this on a Picatinny rail. And then you could oscillate this thing, which is have, has a pivoting oh, head, that's cool. which is kind of cool. Um, but red lens flashlights, people um, typically don't know about the red lens flashlight. But when we're planning in military operations, Red lens flashlight can't be seen beyond 25-ish meters. The naked eye can't pick it up in, in, uh, in, in the wood line. So when you're down and you're planning or you're doing something where you're trying to be uh, evasive and you're trying to not to get discovered, we, we plan under poncho liners, which this is kind of like a poncho liner or a poncho. You put it over you, and now you can plan anything that you have to do uh, with a red lens flashlight instead of a white flashlight compromising your position. And then you rope it like this. Well, the, how thick it is creates a band of basically signature that you can see. So if you're roping a helicopter, you could rope in a helicopter from a couple miles away. They'll see that huge signature, um, depending on the, the the light source. So what we do with this, you can put it on white, and then stretch the lanyard. Um, if the lifespan of this is crazy. Um, inside this pack, we got a, we got a little cool little comic book that we put in there for people. 
driving these Porsches. <laughs> um, uh, where we just put basically a, a situation where you would use the, equi the equipment um, more for fun, but ob obviously it shows the basics, necessities of a, of a survival situation. Um, inside of here, we have all the the staples, the feel goods. We have the Zantac, we have the Advil, we have the uh, Bassett Tracing for small, small scratches. And we have the SPF 150. People don't think about like SPF in a survival situation, but that's one of the first things that's gonna start deteriorating your ability to stay hydrated. One of the most important aspects of this kit, which is uh, what I carry on on me usually all the time when I'm overseas. This, this was made by a guy who works for um, and there's be there's big beef in between this and the cat tourniquet. So this is the tourniquet. So for guys who are in the medical field, if you get a femoral bleed in your hips or your legs and you sever one of those arteries, you get about three minutes to live. Three minutes. Everybody seen Black Hawk Down? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That kid who had that femoral bleed, they maintained the pressure. Yeah. Bleed. I had a buddy bleed down on me and he, he bled out and he was alive for 20 minutes before he died but you wouldn't recognize it because it's hard to detect uh, a good indication of it is swelling up in the hips because your femoral artery bleed, or go through your hip line all the way down your legs and then when you compound fracture your legs you might see the wound as a fracture but on the inside the dude's mm. bleeding out into a cavity a void so this is a tourniquet right the tourniquet in the military we used to use uh um Cravats. Everybody know what a cravat is? It's mm -hmm. usually the little thing you hold your, sl it's like a yeah. sling. Yeah. We'll use the cravat and then we would wrap it around the wound and use a stick tied on there and then mm -hmm. twist it down to stop the bleeding. And they used to think that you put, put it on top of the wound to stop the bleeding. Well, tourniquet, you put it above the wound in between your heart and, and the uh, wound itself. So in this case, it's blind, like I had a compound fracture here. I'm going to put this high up on the wound and then I'm going to um, restrict the blood obviously flowing through my heart through the wound to make sure I don't bleed out. I a tourniquet where you basically create a, a bite or a loop. You put it through into two, two things and you push it down and you lock it in place and that's it. Image. But this can be used for what else? Choking somebody. Choking Choke somebody. somebody yeah. Cordage. Correct. Tying up knots. I mean you could do a whole bunch of different things with this. But also in the minimalist context, this is what we're, I'm working with Jeff on this next thing. It's an easy thing is we're just gonna, you can tie this into a belt. Yeah. And actually put it through your belt loop and then just bite it down on your belt and back loop it. And That's now funny. it's on your person. Or we're doing a belt that has a zip in liner on the inside and now you got to turn it on you. The last thing is this uh, little booklet. Well, most people think that it's like, you know, your death notes right before you die. This is, <laughs> this is my last dear, dear John stuff. But it's it's for coordination. Like if I go into a foreign country and I'm the only one going to a foreign country, I can fly into a foreign country with all the stuff that's in this kit. And when I open this kit, it doesn't look military. There's nothing military about it except for this field manual. Um, when you go in, you might want to pre-coordinate. If I'm going to Australia and I'm going to a city I've never been to, I might want to write down pre-plan, hey, where's the nearest hospital? Write down my blood type, uh, my personal in medical information, because this kit's going to be on my person. So if it's carried with me in my backpack when I'm backpacking out during the day and I can reference something, or if I get into duress and somebody I points a contact on here that I can uh, contact, or somebody you know comes across my you know limp body they can actually identify, you know, hey, this guy's blood type, he's got it written down here, it's O positive, and you can reference this kind of material. We don't think about small sh stuff like this, but this kind of stuff kind of uh, matters, especially for reference.